Hi, my name is Tony and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Reolink RLC 410 5 megapixel bullet cam. If this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. This video is not being sponsored by Reolink. I purchased this camera using my own money. That being said, let's hop over to the computer. Reolink offers great quality at a great price, making for an exceptional value. At the time of this recording, the Reolink RLC 410 5 megapixel bullet camera is selling on Amazon for $47.49. If you're interested in this product, I'll put a link in the video description down below. Let's take a closer look at the features of this camera right on Reolink's website. The RLC 410 offers power over ethernet, audio recording, it's IP66 waterproof, it has motion detection, it offers a pixel resolution of 2560 by 1920. It sports 18 infrared LEDs for excellent night vision at a distance of up to 100 feet with an 80 degree viewing angle. Receive email alerts when motion is detected or push notifications through the Reolink app. Access your camera through the Reolink app on your mobile device, the Reolink client on your desktop or from a browser on the desktop as well. The Reolink app is available for iOS and Android. The desktop client is available for Mac and Windows. You have the option of 24 seven recording or motion recording, and you can record motion to the optional micro SD card. Now for a quick unboxing and a look at what's inside. So as far as the packaging guys, it's not much as far as packaging is concerned. It's just a plain old B flat box. Let's take a look at the inside contents and see what we have. So inside the box, you have the real link bullet cam itself, a quick start guide, mounting hardware with an Allen wrench for adjusting the camera angles an ethernet cable, as well as a waterproof coupling to keep the connection safe. Also included with the quick start guide, you have a couple of real link security stickers and there's also a mounting hole template. Let's take a closer look at the camera itself. The construction is extremely sturdy as the entire exterior of the camera is made out of metal. Looking at the front of the camera, you can see the 18 infrared nighttime sensors. On the rear of the camera, you have your micro SD card slot located under this cover. To access it, just remove these two screws. Using the provided Allen key, you could loosen the Allen screw here for flexible camera angle adjustment. On the underside of the camera, you have a QR code for a quick and easy setup. The cable has three different types of connectors. The ethernet connector can be used for data or data and PoE in case you choose to power the camera over PoE. You have a camera reset button. And then you have your power port in case you don't power the camera with PoE and just want to use a traditional power adapter. Okay, I have the real link camera plugged into my PoE switch and I have my browser open and pointed to the camera's IP address. And we're at the login page. Now, if you're wondering how I found out the camera's IP address, I simply went to my router and I looked at the DHCP lease table and you can see here, it was issued 192.168.25.125. So all I did was open up another browser tab and entered that information here. And you can see now I am at the login screen. So I'm going to enter the username and password and the default credentials for the real link camera are as follows. The username is admin and the password is left blank. So we're going to go ahead and log in. You can see that the camera was automatically detected on the network. Looking at the browser interface, 
we have up here on the right hand side, we have some basic settings and some advanced settings. If we click on basic settings, you can see we can change the camera name and the position of where it appears on the image. We could also change the position of the date and time or choose not to show it at all. As you can see there, I'm just going to turn that back on for now. Under the encode tab, you can play with the encoding settings for the stream, choose whether or not to record audio, play with the resolution. You have several different options. You can play around with the frame rate. It supports up to 30 frames per second. You can play around with the maximum bit rate and the default for the real link camera is 6144. And you can play around with the H.264 profile as far as base, main, or high. Under advanced settings, you have anti-flicker control, exposure control, white balance, day and night, backlit, and LED light. And for right now, we're just going to leave all that set to the defaults. If you click up on the settings cog here, you have even more options. I have some of the same options you had earlier under the basic settings here by changing the name and the date and time. Also here you can add a watermark or a mask. Under recording, under encode, you have your same encoding settings and resolution settings. So you can play with those here as well. Under advanced, you have some more advanced features as far as scheduling, recording, and things like that, whether to choose motion or not. Under network, you have your general network settings here. You can give the camera a static IP if you wish. Under advanced network settings, you can change your different ports. You could also see here that the real link camera is on VIF compatible. And then under status, you can see the camera's current settings. Under alarm, you can set your motion alarm schedule here. Under system, under general, you can select your standards. Now here in the U.S., we would use NTSC. If you're not in the U.S., you would use PAL, PAL. You can set your time zone. We'll change that to Eastern Time. We'll go ahead and say OK. Again, here's the camera device name and all the information. Here's a maintenance screen where you can upload a camera firmware file if you've downloaded it from Reolink's website. You could also export your current configuration as a backup. Under performance, you can see some of your stats, like your CPU stats and your bitrate stats. Under reboot, you can enable an auto reboot and set a schedule, for example, once a week, every Saturday or every Sunday, or you can disable this feature. You also have the option to do a manual reboot now. Under users, you have your admin user. You can add a user. You can manage the different users. Under device, if you're using the manual micro SD card, you can format it here. Now we're looking at the camera through the real link desktop client on the Macintosh. In the device list here, you can see the camera was automatically found on the network. If you want to add devices manually, you just simply click the add device button. Here you can see the same settings under basic that we saw through the web browser, as well as the same advanced settings that we saw through the web browser. And then if we click on the settings cog here, let me just move this over for you. You can see we have the same setting options that we had through the web browser. And finally, let's take a look at the camera on the real link iOS app. I have the app open on my iPhone and you can see here the camera's showing up and it says uninitialized device. So let's click on that. And you can see here it's going to take us through a little bit of a setup wizard. And it's asking us first off to create a login password. Remember, the default credentials are admin and the password is blank. So it's good that it's asking us to create a password here. Interesting that the app forces you into creating a password, but the web browser or the desktop client did not. But in any event, we're just going to put in a password. I'm just going to keep it simple for the purpose of this video. Step two, device settings, name the camera. So it's taking us through a nice setup wizard here. We're just going to call it 
test cam. Initialization finished. Please allow the app to access your album for image and video storage. Let's click on settings. And we're going to click on photos and we're going to say read and write. Let's go back to the camera. And now you can see it's loading the live stream. So looking at the buttons underneath, you can pause the live stream here. Turn on recording so that you can hear the sound. So you have the option of enabling the recording here. You can take a picture here. Take video. Here you can set your resolution. Fluent, balanced, and 5 megapixels. Fluent is probably the best setting when viewing on a mobile device over cellular. And this last icon flips the screen sideways, but I don't want to do this during the recording process. Let's go up to the cog. And you can see here now that you have your different settings that you can adjust. So you can see how simple it is to access the camera using a web browser, the desktop client, or the mobile app. So what's your take on Real Link products? Do you use them? If so, put your experiences down in the video description below. I have several of these systems out in production and I haven't had a single problem. They seem to be rock solid. In the next video, I'll probably take a look at setting up this real link cam using Synology's surveillance station. So if you like the video guys and you found any value in it today, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. And thanks again for using those Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.